Um, but now today after the update, we've got uh, camera cabin and main cabin, uh, main camera, which is forward. Then we go to wide. So this is using the, the sort of the camera array at the top here. And then we go narrow. So we can see each one of those cameras, which we've never been able to see before. Then the left door pillar. So that's the B pillar out of there. Uh, the left fender, which is the repeater camera. The right camera, which is out this side. <laughs> and then the right fender. So the right repeater seeing backwards. And then of course the rear view. So that's something a bit new uh, in this release. Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Jonathan Z, Sean L, and Bracken F. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. As far as I can tell right now, it looks like with the new software update and the camera previews, you cannot actually preview these while in motion, but I would not be surprised if that feature comes in the future. Also with this software update, along with the service mode changes we already talked about, Tesla has brought back the trip duration in terms of minutes when it comes to the odometer. And Tesla Europe shared this video saying you can now adjust the screen layout with one tap in the Model S and X. Pretty nice and also, at least in this case, looking pretty snappy. So apparently I should be taking more days off because the last two times I had to do so, we got the Ford NAX announcement and this time around we get the GM NAX announcement. Now there are so many implications and things to think about here. I've been thinking about this now the past few weeks. I'm going to start doing more deep dive videos on the topics that deserve it that will be released on the weekends. So maybe think about throwing on the notifications for when those start to come out. And in the comments today, let me know what topics you would like to see a deep dive research based video on and like the ones that you're interested so I can get a sense of what you guys are into. I love the news during the week, nothing will change there, but I do miss doing the deeper dive videos where this channel actually began. So keep an eye out for those on the weekend. This one isn't news. We've known now that the Model S and X are being delivered with Tesla's new hardware for chip and the new Project Phoenix HD radar as well. We also heard that some Model Ys also had the new hardware for, but that that is not going to be in all Model Ys at least for a few months, presumably due to camera shortages that go with the new hardware for. But in case some of you were doubting that Tesla was actually bringing back an HD radar, here are some pictures to prove they have. And yes, this would be news if we were being told that the hardware for Model Ys did have this radar, but so far that is not the case. It's still just the Model S and X with the new HD radar. Elon is speaking at an energy event in Austin today, and we get word that he said he doesn't see higher volume production for the semi until late. 2024. Reason being battery supply constraints, which is perfect timing because just last week, what did we say? Back when we got that other blurb that Tesla execs were saying they are no longer battery supply constrained, I just reminded everybody that does not mean that's going to stay the case into perpetuity and a few days later, here we are. Elon also called on the nation's largest energy providers to invest in more power generation, forecasting electricity demand would triple by around 2045, saying the future is not like the past. The future is a massive increase in electricity demand, and it's going to take everything that we've got just to keep up with it. So of course, it's pretty vague wording here. They're not talking about volume production like they do with the cars, which is a 5,000 unit per week mark. That's because back on the Q3 call last year, Elon said we're tentatively aiming for 50,000 units in 2024 for the Tesla Semi in North America. 5,000 units per week is roughly 250,000 units per year. So the way I would interpret this for now, Tesla Semi production most likely staying in the single digits per week for the foreseeable future. Honestly though, I'm not that surprised. We're still waiting on the Giga Nevada expansion, which is mainly for Tesla Semi production and increased 4680 production. That of course is not done yet and we haven't really had any updates since the actual announcement. We know the Legacy or Mega Pack 1 production that was taking place at Giga Nevada is now done, so they are presumably underway shifting things over to Semi production, but no updates. To find a silver lining, this of course will give Tesla more time to work on the product, continue to iterate it before it actually reaches more volume production. Going back to Tesla's master plan part three, where they have the short range and long range semi truck, 
the long range 800 kilowatt hour battery pack and the short range 500 kilowatt hour. There they will be using LFP cells with the long range of course, high nickel cells. And just a reminder also on that Q3 call last year, Elon said the semi does not use 4680s, it's been using 2170s. We get the latest Tesla weekly insured data, 16,400 units. Troy was expecting 14,500, so this is a big win. Plugging that data into the table, if you wanted to compare it to the same week in quarter one, that number was 17,032. But cumulatively from week one to week 10 in quarter one, we were at 88,138. And over the same time period in quarter two, now we're at 110,763. The previous record high for domestic deliveries in China was in quarter one, that number 137,499. That means we only need another 28,000 or so units over the last three or so weeks remaining in quarter two to set a new domestic delivery record, which seems pretty easy based on the numbers we're seeing right now. Bear in mind toward the end of the quarter, the last two or three weeks do tend to dip a little bit, even still, at the current pace on track for a new record quarter. Also, year to date through May, the Model Y sold 152.4 thousand units retail in China, up 87% year over year, and was also the best selling SUV in China during that time. Year to date, the Model Y was followed up in second place by the BYD Song Plus, and in third by the BYD Yuan Plus. And you can certainly handpick some Model 3 sales data that would suggest a slowdown or a bit of an Osborne effect as people await for the Project Highland, Model Y cannibalizing, whatever you wanna argue, but zooming out in China again, year to date, the Model 3 is still the best-selling premium sedan in China. And we've heard the reports that some government entities in China are now deepening ties and warming up to the idea of FSD in China. But there are still some hurdles, so just keep these things in mind. China still has concerns about national security and where and how Tesla is processing all of this data it's gathering from its fleet. Only 19 entities are qualified to maintain and provide navigational map data in China. Tesla is not yet among them. Tesla will likely need to use a local provider, meaning Tesla will most likely have to set up a local supercomputer center. Even if Tesla is granted a permit to collect data in China, it'll likely be forced to process it locally. Sending that information back to the United States sounds like a no-no. And as Elon has said previously, 90% of the software capabilities of FSD can be used anywhere in the world. Only 10% has to be localized. We're certainly headed in the right direction for Tesla's FSD expansion into China. China, but there may be a few extra hurdles around the data gathering and processing side that may delay things at least a bit. It took about 15 months, but Giga Berlin with the world's most advanced paint shop is now producing Model Ys in all five colors, white, black, Quicksilver, Midnight Cherry Red, and now Deep Metallic Blue. Martin Vieca has kind of been on one lately this time around. He said, people argue all of the electricity from charging your EV comes from coal. He says, no, it doesn't. In the EU, most electricity comes from nuclear, hydro, wind, and solar. And the trend is difficult to argue with. The carbon footprint of your EV declines every year. And for the first time as of 2022, when it comes to the share of electricity generation as a percent, wind and solar has finally overtaken gas for the cherry on top. He said, if you charge your Model 3 solely with coal for 17 years, the average lifetime of a US vehicle, you would still have a lower lifetime carbon footprint than the same size gas car. This includes the manufacturing phase of an EV. The science is settled here. The 2024 model of the Polestar 2 will be slightly more expensive, but it does get some new motors, some new inverters, and some longer range. The Polestar 2 rear wheel drive now starts at $51,300. That vehicle will get 320 miles of range and do 0 to 60 in 5.9 seconds. The dual motor all wheel drive variant will start around $55,000 and get 276 miles of range and do 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds. It will have the 360 degree cameras, which most of us wish Tesla would just do, but you will have to pay for a package to get a heat pump, which comes standard in a Tesla Model 3. Deliveries of the new Polestar 2 start in August 
and it will qualify for the $7,500 federal tax credit if you lease it. Feast your eyes on the latest from Toyota, set to roll out solid state battery EVs as soon as 2027. Their CTO said, we found quality material. We'll keep up with the rest of the world and definitely put it to practical use. Not only that, but Toyota also saying it aims to launch next generation lithium ion batteries in 2026 with longer ranges and faster charging. And back to solid state stating a technological breakthrough that will allow them to mass produce these solid state batteries and commercialize them between 2027 and 28. And for that more efficient lithium ion battery, they're touting 621 miles on the high end of the EV market. And for their solid state cars, they're saying 1200 kilometers, which is 745 miles that would charge in 10 minutes. Unsurprisingly, Toyota did not detail expected costs or required investment for these plans. Toyota also touting its new EV dedicated architecture and a new manufacturing technique. They'll have self-propelling assembly lines, meaning cars under production would drive themselves through the process. They also plan to use gigacasting to cut production costs, who would have thought? I find it pretty interesting that all of these new revolutionary game-changing technologies are announced by Toyota the day before they have their annual shareholder meeting where their board is facing intense pressure from a group of institutional investors because Toyota has been delaying this EV rollout relative to other automakers. I think the reporting that Akio Toyota will be ousted from the board are overblown as just last year he earned a 96% approval rate at the annual shareholder meeting. But a growing number of investors in Toyota are becoming more vocal in disapproval of Toyota's plans. Let's take a quick walk down memory lane. Toyota to launch solid state battery EV in 2022. Here we are in 2023. That didn't happen. This was 2017. Here's another one. Toyota to make over 10 battery EV models in the early 2020s back in 2017. I could go on and on, but just one more for good measure. Toyota eyes long range electric vehicles by 2020. Scroll down to find this was back in 2016. Let's just say I'm not holding my breath here, even though yes, Toyota has nearly a thousand patents in the solid state world, that does not mean it's going to translate into commercial production at scale. This really just feels like a matter of Toyota trying to drive the narrative for this week to cover up some of the not so great headlines and Toyota has shown us it has a rich history of overpromising when it comes to EVs and under delivering. Here we have Stellantis saying today that it continues to evaluate Tesla's charging standard after Ford and GM made their moves. At this time, we continue to evaluate the NAC standard and look forward to discussing it more in the future. Saying our focus is to provide the customer the best charging experience possible. This one feels like just a matter of time. If you're thinking to yourself, what EVs does Stellantis even have in the North American market? I don't blame you. It's because the rollout really hasn't started yet. But over the next year or so, it's supposed to start with the Ram and Jeep EV. The Ram 1500 REV pickup truck is slated for late 2024. And last we heard the Jeep Wagoneer S is supposed to be open for reservations in North America later this year. What they're evaluating at this phase is anybody's guess. You can find me on Twitter at Dylan Loomis 22. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.